So for inverted flight, our end goal is to be able to fly around inverted as if we were upright and be just as comfortable. So we need to remember a couple things. First of all, aileron is the same direction. Right is right, left is left. So the big difference is going to be your elevator. When you push, you're going to go up. When you pull, you're going to come down. I highly recommend not pulling until you're 100% comfortable inverted. Just relax the down pressure and you'll find the plane settles in and comes down just as, you, as you'd like. And a, another thing is rudder is backwards uh, if you do use a lot of rudder when you're flying. So when you're going away from yourself, one thing I use to remember which way to go is you want to push the rudder the direction you want the tail to go. So if you're going away from yourself and you want to turn right, so you want the rudder to go to the left, you push the rudder left and it'll turn the way you want it to. The best way to get into inverted flight and pra start practicing is when you're in an upright and pass, just roll to inverted and fly the length of the runway inverted. Once you're comfortable with, the, with this, we can start flying the circuit. So just roll back upright and come around and do it again in the direction you're comfortable. Once you're comfortable, roll inverted, do your flyby. When you get to the end of the runway, roll the direction you want to turn, usually going to be to the right, and push to maintain your altitude just as you would pull when you're upright. If you get in trouble at any time, Nail the ailerons, get it upright as quick as possible, and get away from the ground. Again, start high, 200 feet minimum, we call two mistakes high, and start bringing it down as you get more and more comfortable. Next, we'll talk about setup for inverted flight. And a tail-heavy airplane is going to be very pitch sensitive, both upright and inverted. And you're going to find it's accentuated when you're inverted because you're not used to that push as much as you are pull. So I find a plane that's a little bit nose heavy actually feels a little more locked in when inverted. The next thing I want to talk about is exponential. If you're using exponential on your plane, I found over the years that I like a little less exponential on the down elevator than I do the up just because it, it tends to leave the lag out when you're pushing and pushing and pushing and then all of a sudden you have your control. So keep that in mind. It's something to try. You may find you like more expo. It's all just a matter of how your thumbs work. So go out, start high, start practicing, bring it down lower and lower and pretty soon you'll be doing passes right down the runway and you'll be just as comfortable as if you're upright. snap roll we're trying to emulate a full scale maneuver. So basically when you watch a full scale plane do a snap roll what they do is they pull a hard elevator which stalls the wings and then they use strictly rudder to rotate the plane. It's an auto rotation of sorts. So when the plane snaps you'll actually see the elevator go down, the tail of the plane drop on a positive snap and you'll see the rudder move around the plane in a conical motion. Basically the spinner stays still and the whole plane rotates around. The opposite is true for a negative snap. Basically negative means there's negative loading on the wing. So you'll see the tail go towards the top of the plane, but the same conical rotation all the way around. So now to perform the snap roll with a model airplane slightly different than a full scale. We have a hard time stalling our wings because our, our weight and our wing loading is a lot lower than the, our full scale counterparts. So what you'll find is you actually need aileron to make the plane snap. We still try and emulate the positive pitch of the plane, the stalling of the wings, and then we'll add aileron and uh, rudder at the exact same time to get the snap roll effect. You want to stay in the elevator and use the rudder and you'll see that same conical motion we talked about in the full scale. Of course this takes a lot of practice to, to get it right, but you know just a little bit of time. Same thing's true with the inverted. Now on a positive snap when you're using your aileron and your rudder, they're going to go the same direction or sticks to the left or sticks to the right. When you're inverted because your rudder's backwards to the ailerons, you're actually going to pitch and then you're going to go either sticks in or sticks out, which means opposite rudder to aileron to get the same snap roll on the negative. So a lot of planes will require quite a bit of aileron. Let's talk about that first since it's what's different from our full scale counterparts. I find anywhere between 25 and 35 degrees of aileron to be very helpful. So you're just going to have to play with it. It depends on how fast you want your plane to snap. You can be a blur and look like the Tasmanian Devil or you can make it fly a nice slow snap that can be a little easier to control. It's all personal preference. Next let's talk about elevator. Elevator I find usually between 10 and 15 degrees of throw is what you want too much and the plane's going to get too deep in the snap and it's almost going to stop flying because you're going to basically put the brakes on when you hit the elevator. So again, you're going to have to mess with it and, and tweak it until you find what works for both your style of flying the snap and what the model wants to do. The biggest effect on snaps for me has been rudder. Too much rudder causes the plane to get too deep into the snap and do what we call wind up. So then when you let off the input, the plane will actually keep rotating because it's so deep in the snap. So what you want is you want enough rudder so you get that conical motion, but not enough to where when you let off the inputs, the plane keeps rotating. Again, 
it's per personal preference. I find a great starting point is to fly the plane straight down the runway, roll to knife edge at about three quarter throttle, and you want just enough rudder to where the plane will slightly climb it with full deflection and about three quarter throttle. These are great starting points, and with a little bit of practice, you'll have snaps down in no time.